Hello you all. In this video, you will learn how to use the Salesforce CLI and Salesforce extensions for Visual Studio Code to work with source track and non-source track orgs. You will learn the difference between those two and also how to retrieve and deploy both code and declarative changes. You will also learn about metadata dependencies and some tips and tricks on using Visual Studio Code and get best practices that will improve your development lifecycle and team collaboration. My name is Julian Duque. I'm a principal developer advocate here at Salesforce, and this is the fourth video of the DevOps Essential series. Before we get started, let me tell you a little bit more about the DevOps Essential series. Here, you will learn about fundamental concepts that will help you design and deploy Salesforce applications. If you missed any of the videos, please make sure to catch up. For this video, we will be working with the Salesforce extensions for Visual Studio Code. We will increase your productivity while working on Salesforce projects. And also, we will use the Salesforce CLI. Now, Let's learn about source track versus non-source track orgs. A source track org is an org where source tracking is enabled. By default, every Scratch org has source tracking enabled. You can also enable these on developer and developer pros and boxes. But what does source tracking mean? It means that the source is tracked between both the Salesforce local project and the Salesforce platform. And its main advantage is that you can have a complete resolution mechanism between those two. Production orgs, partial copy sandboxes, and full sandboxes can never be source tracked. In order to allow source tracking, you will need to go to your production org, under setup, dev hub, and enable source tracking. So every developer and developer pro sandbox that has been created or refreshed based on this org are going to have source tracking enabled. On this series, we have been working on the DreamHouse DevOps project. I previously cloned this project from GitHub and I'm planning to implement a couple of uh, features. Since Alba, Mohit, and maybe other members of my team are also working on this project, the best practice to avoid conflicts is to create a branch. To create a branch, you can use either the Git CLI or Visual Studio Code. But before we create it, let's uh, consider some naming best practices. A best practice is to name your branch using your username followed by the work item number or the GitHub issue number like this one. Or you can use a more descriptive name like the feature you are implementing like this one. Now let's see how can we create a branch using the developer tools. You can create a branch from the Git CLI starting from the main branch with the command git branch and the branch name. And then switch to that branch with the command git checkout and the branch name. But my favorite way is with git checkout dash B and the name of that branch. This will create and switch with just one command. You can check that it was created and that you are working on that branch by running git branch. From Visual Studio Code, go to the source control tab, expand the branches panel and click on plus to create a branch. Make sure to select Create Branch and Switch to start working on the future. Before we start making changes in our project, let's connect to an org. To connect to an org, I will show you how to do it using either the Salesforce CLI or Visual Studio Code. With the Salesforce CLI, you can use the SF or login web command. This will take you to a web browser and there you will enter your credentials. You can list the orgs that you are authenticated into with the SF org list command. If you want to learn more, visit this resource 
to see what other options you have with the Salesforce CLI. From Visual Studio Code, click on the org menu and select Authorize an org. This will also take you to a web browser, enter your credentials, and voila, you're authenticated from Visual Studio Code. Now, it is time to start making changes to our project. First, we will retrieve declarative changes like a layout update from lining up builder from both non-source tracked and source track orgs using Salesforce CLI and Visual Studio Code. Here we are working on a non-source track developer sandbox. Let's edit the layout of this page using the lining up builder. I will move the position of the lining web component. Saved. And then let's see how to retrieve those changes using the Salesforce CLI. First, I'll need to switch to the non-source track org. Then, just out of curiosity, I will try to preview if there is any change in the remote org. Since we are using a source track org, we cannot use this command. If we want to retrieve metadata, we will need to specify a folder or the metadata name. You can also use the metadata API, but make sure to check the previous video, setting up an org for development, where Mohit covers about sandboxes and the metadata API. In Visual Studio Code, first let's change to the non-source track org. To see if there are any changes in the org, we can right-click on the source folder and select div folder against org. This is one advantage over the CLI. Here we can see the difference before we retrieve the changes. To retrieve, Let's right click on the file and select retrieve source from org. And that's it. Now we can see the changes ready to be deployed on the source control tab. Now let's retrieve the changes on a source track org. Let's again modify this layout, changing the position of one component, saving, and let's see how can we retrieve the changes from the Salesforce CLI. First, we will need to switch to the source tract org. Then let's see if we have files to retrieve with the preview command. This command is only available on source track orgs. And as you can see, we have a lot of different files that we are not tracking in our project, but we are just only interested in the property finder flexi page. So let's use the project retrieve start command to fetch that file. And now the file is in our project. With Visual Studio Code, uh, what we are going to use is the pull source from default org command. This is going to the org and fetch the files that are not in our project. Here, we will see that the property finder flexi page was downloaded in the flexi pages folder. Now this file is available in our source control tab to be added to our project. Let's see how can we deploy local changes to our orgs using both the Salesforce CLI and Visual Studio Code. For this demo, we are going to be making changes to one of our Lining Web components. Let's update the property filter component and change the max price variable. Then let's see if we can preview the changes that we are going to be deploying to our known source track org. Since we don't have the source tracking enabled, we will get an error. In this case, we will need to be specific while deploying, specifying either the metadata like what we did with the retrieve command or the source deal of our component like what we are doing in this case. Then we deploy and we can see that all of the components are in our org. Now let's deploy those changes to our source track org. First, we will preview the deploy. Now we can see what files are we going to deploy to our org. Then we just can trigger the project deploy the start command and it will take all of the changes that are pending and it will be deploying to the org. If we execute the project deploy preview 
command again, now we can see that there are no more pending files to deploy. And with Visual Studio Code, you can use the command push source to default org. This command is only going to be available for source track orgs. Now that our files have been deployed, you have learned how to use both the Salesforce CLI and Visual Studio Code to retrieve and deploy to both non-source tracked and source track orgs. One last thing, managing metadata dependencies can be difficult, but if you want to understand more, you can use the metadata component dependency from the tooling API but take into account that this feature is still in beta. Let's see how can we query this information. Here, I wanna check the dependencies for the property record page. For that, I will need to have the metadata component ID. Then I will perform a query using the Salesforce CLI to the metadata component dependency object using the tooling API. And now we can see the list of the components that the property record page depends on. But the good news is when working with a source track org, all of these dependencies are managed by default. And that's it. Make sure to check all of the resources that we presented today in this video, and also go ahead and watch the previous episodes of this DevOps Essential series. Now, what you need to do is take that feature, commit it to your branch, and make a pull request. Don't forget to subscribe to our Salesforce Developers YouTube channel, and make sure to click on the bell to receive notifications on every video that we publish. Thank you very much for watching, and see you on the next one. Bye-bye.